the closer I get to you. Makes me want you more and more. Baby, I don't know what's going on on this episode of Queen Sugar, but it seems to me that Mr. Remy and uh, Sister Nova might be getting a little closer. Maybe he can help her with that writer's blocking. Maybe she can appreciate him and what he has to offer a little bit better than her sister. What's going on, everybody? This is me, Miss Sophia the Diva, tis I, here for another review and discussion of this week's Queen Sugar. We are in season three. This is episode four, No Haven in My Shadow. There's a lot going on in here. But not really. It was a really good episode. It was very emotional, especially towards the end. They had a bonfire to commemorate the life and uh, times of their beloved father, brother, grandpa, Ernest Bodon. Uh, if you recall, last in the first season, Ernest passed away on Blue's birthday. So, uh, Blue's not really into birthdays this year. We learned that instead of having a birthday party, we're going to have a bonfire. But before we get into that, at the end of last episode, we saw that Darla returned. I speculate that Blue got on the phone and said, Mom, Daddy had a woman in the living room, and Darla's like, mm -mm, I still want me some Ralph Angel, so I'm going to get on the first thing smoking and come back and see if I can't get him to want me, even though I'm a low-down, dirty, lying, cheat. Yeah, I'm going to get my man back and my baby too. So she's back. Nova has a case of writer's block. And like all of us, we all have like that one family member that we know can call and pep us up. I have several cousins that I will talk to, like my cousin Dion, my cousin Mia, my cousin Sharita. Absolutely enjoy talking to them because they can always help me get through some things. So um, I was like, baby, black people don't have time for writer's block like what <laughs> you gotta love southern black anies not aunties anies as on vibes like honey first of all now the people told you that they want to hear about your life right okay well then write about yourself honey you'll be all right anyway here come this damn church heifer up in here in this kitchen now on Vi has an order of cherry pies to fill and here comes sister effie now, apparently, Unvi has lived up to her end of the deal. She has the church booked from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every Wednesday. Miss Effie said that ain't going to fly because the Sisters Dinner Club has been coming here all these years as long as I've been a member. And so Unvi is just like, but girl, them checks I've been writing been clearing. So what is the problem? See, Effie is one of those that I can't stand out of the church. She's that typical messy church woman that's all about leveraging her power and position because she ain't got no power anywhere else but in the church because at home her husband probably ain't treating her right. As a matter of fact, he probably spend more time in the easy chair than he do easing in the bed with her at night. All I'm saying is it was foul and wrong and a vi God bless you for having the patience of Job to deal with this incredulous woman. But move on, honey. Let Hollywood help you get this van that you need. Rent out an industrial kitchen. Hell, have somebody build a kitchen. Make Charlie open up her big ass kitchen to you, okay? And I love how when she called Charlie to let her know that Mr. Prosper had a doctor's appointment he needed to go to. And it wasn't really a question. It was like, um, yeah, Mr. Prosper needs for you to come pick him up uh, to go to his doctor's appointment. Now, what I really liked about that whole scene with Prosper and Charlie is that it was a lesson, a lesson in patience. A lot of us really don't take time out these days to spend time with the elderly and our older people because, oh my God, they're boring, they're a little weird. Oh my God, they make me feel awkward. I was blessed growing up. As many of you know, Queen Sugar really resonates with me because it reminds me a lot of my childhood and my upbringing with my great, great aunt, Betty for whom I love and cherish dearly. Uh, June 3rd would have been her 105th birthday this year had she lived. As you know, she passed away in July of 2006, right after I finished my law degree. So, uh, yeah. 
Uh, but it resonates with me, like being in the country and rural parts and, and the farming aspect, all of that. It just, this show really resonates with me. But I said that to say this because I spent so much time, I always say before there were the original Golden Girls, I was hanging out with Aunt Betty and her Golden Girls crew. So I know what it's like to hang out with the older crowd. And that's probably why um, I get a kick out of hanging out with older people all the time anyways, because I love hanging out with them and talking to them and all their stories of the olden days. Although I realize I've lived 41 years on this earth and I kind of am living in the olden days sometimes because some stuff I just can't get with like all these electronic calendars and stuff. Um, give me a paper and pen and some calendar dates. That's how I roll. But you know, Charlie was being really impatient with Mr. Prosper. He told her, girl, just take a second and sit down. You know, he's trying to look for his medical records. He can't find them because his deceased wife, God rest her soul, she had everything organized. But this is a part of aging, and this is how some people do it. Charlie, maybe there's an opportunity here in St. Josephine for you to get some sort of system established for people similarly situated like Mr. Prosper. However, they decide to reschedule. And on this second rescheduling, she has to go back in the house and get his jacket. What she discovers is the Landrys are continuing to take back people's property. And what is most unfortunate about this is that they are only compensating these people who are in these tenancies. Sharecroppers is really what it is. $5,000 to relocate. Honey, you can't go anywhere for $5,000. $5,000 would be what it would cost to move these days somewhere. But Charlie knows I have to take care of this. I have to do something. So she goes and talks to the Landrys. Now she has a little bit of work. Her private detective is, in the words of Anthony Hopkins from the movie Fracture, the dick is good. She knows what she's doing. We discover that there is a 6% 6 uh, difference between the amount of shares that uh, Sam Landry and his sister own. Now, the sister is on the Boudreaux side of things, and she has those Jacob, Jace, what are the sons name? Jacob, and then another one that lives in Texas who's married that's a big time patent attorney. But we learn that even though he is the pillar of the community, he is also serving out his pillar to another side piece, a homewrecker, so to speak. But you know, in those types of families, I'm sorry, I think it's kind of just known that, okay, my husband is a hoe and I'm just happy to be wearing diamonds and furs and pearls. Okay. So that's something that might be an angle to start using to leverage and, and, and start breaking the Landry family down. But at the same time, I'm beginning to wonder, is Charlie being overly ambitious and is it even worth what she's trying to do? Because now we learn that the reason why the Landrys are uh, breaking their land leases with the tenants is because supposedly the hurricanes that came caused some sort of mercury to run off into the soil. And so the EPA has to come in and do a lot of soil testing to make sure that it's safe. Otherwise, it could become blighted area and there would be no more far farming on the Landry's property. And so he tells... Uh, Charlie, by the way, you part of this now. So Charlie's like, I've got to do something because you're messing with a family friend that's like our pop pop to us. So we got to do something. Uh, Davis comes over at one point during this episode to pick up Micah. Micah sees that his parents are kind of having a moment. So he makes an excuse to go retrieve his cell phone. And Davis is in this awkward thing where he's like, oh, I like what you've done to the place. And Charlie's just looking like, um... Ain't nothing changed since you were here last. <laughs> I was like, Davis is trying, Charlie. He He's so remorseful for what he's done. Now, on this trip out with Davis, we find out that Davis, he was not only cheating on Charlie with some high-class escorts. <sighs> Child, he done fucked around and created a daughter. And they told nobody about this child. And the only reason now why he's having to step up and reveal what's really been going on is that the mother has died. And Micah is like, what? Like, how old is she? He's like, 30. I'm like, oh, Lord. Davis, 
Really? Anyway, uh, Micah, that Micah got some more shit to do. Look, you know, I already tore up his childhood as he knows it for you already stepping out on his mama. But now to find out that there's a whole child. Damn, Davis, you were a whole the entire marriage to this woman who stood by you, made sure you had everything you need to be a success. All you had to do was go out there on the court, secure the bag and keep it pushing and be a, a devoted husband. But you couldn't even do that. Typical male egos, typical male egos. Now, Remy comes onto the property now to use it as his classroom because as many of you know who follow the show, Remy is a professor at Louisiana State in the agriculture uh, department. And so he has a class out there and him and Nova kind of seem to have a little something going on. And I'm like, what's going on here, honey? What's going on? Uh, somebody needs to tell me something, okay? So we all on Twitter went mad crazy when we saw like this, some sort of connection with Davis and Nova. Uh, Nova told an interesting story, which I'm like, Nova, there's a story right there for your book where she talks about how she, they all used to go, um, they all had something with their dad and hers was going fishing with her dad. That was their thing. And she tells the story about how she knew that some white men had roughed up her father when he was coming out the little general store. And she said, after that, I never want to go fishing again. And I'm like, that's a good essay to write about how you knew that your father had been uh, mistreated and abused by the white man. And I must say it was very refreshing and very pleasant not to see Remy being so salty. Uh, Darla and Ralph Angel, let's talk about them real quick. As I stated at the top of the episode, Darla's back. I don't know, how do y'all feel about that? Like, it's kind of, it's, it, it's really interesting because she's like, I'm gonna be in my son's life. We gonna have to figure out how to make it work. Ralph Angel, a little bit reprehensive about it because he's just kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. And then when she comes in, she's like, I came back in time for his birthday. And I noticed that on his bed, he has plastic coverings. Well, yeah, because he started wetting the bed. You left. And your child's little dream of having mommy and daddy together was ruined because of your own selfishness. So, yes, you're concerned about why you weren't told that he's wet in the bed. We're all concerned about the fact that you weren't upfront and honest with Ralph Angel about the potential parentage of a child he's been raising. His family has been raising since his birth. Who does that? Or at least since he was a baby. So I don't know. And there is a big fight that kind of ensues over, or not a fight, but kind of a tension is created about this whole field trip and which parents should go and rap angels like i already told miss santiago i was going and i'm just like so there darla because you weren't here anyway so you just now gonna show up talking about you want to go to the aquarium with blue and i feel so bad for blue because he just he's just a baby he you know he's a child and he doesn't understand it his mom and dad his mama fucked up. Let's just be real about that. She's a fucked up individual. Okay. But I, at the same time, I kind of can't hate Darla because, you know, she was lost and now she's found and she's trying to get her shit together. There's a moment of clarity here. I wonder, I mean, when she was probably high, I mean, I don't know how y'all feel about this. I, I just really hate that Blue is in the middle. I really hate the fact that Blue doesn't want to celebrate his birthday. I mean, that was tragic that Pop died on his birthday, or got very ill on his birthday during his birthday party. God bless little children that have to deal with that, Jesus. Whew. Then there's Aunt Vi in Hollywood. Aunt Vi, you need to slow down, you need to pump your brakes, girl, and let people help you that care about you. You and Hollywood are about to be married. You don't want him to help you with anything. He's got this great idea about a food truck when you would drop it off your cherry pies that you know that was truly hard labor because you had to deal with Miss Effie and her BS and, and, and some of them were crushed. And so he's going to try to get you a van, but you don't want it. Tell me, I don't want to owe anyone anything. This is a man you're about to marry. This will be your helpmate. Let him help you. You have a condition where you need to take it easy. Bottom line, lupus is nothing to play with. It's a very 
unpredictable disease. You just never know when it'll strike. All I'm saying is, um, bye. you need to take care of yourself. You need to hire help. You need to get you some non-disclosure agreements. Get some people in there to help you whip those pies and cakes and cookies and everything else you're in there making. And you need to kick back and just provide instruction. That's what you need to do. And you need to allow Hollywood to be the man that he is to you. Accept the help. It's not like it's one of the Landry's rolling up on you to offering help. That would be like you trying to take a sale from a snake oil salesman. Also, we learned in this episode that Charlie is still a little skittish. Can you blame her? I mean, Davis did do a number on her. But Prosper, once she gets him to the doctor, Romero, I don't know if he's a nurse or a radiologist or who he is, an intake specialist, but he works at the hospital where uh, Mr. Prosper has to go and it's an awkward moment. But she was honest about it. She's like, I really haven't taken time for myself. I'm still, uh. But he told her, he told her, I know a great place to get this food. A, a pie is what he calls it. Like, he must be from New York. He wants to take her out for pizza. But I was like, what about the chicken? Either way, maybe Charlie, maybe Romero is not what we speculated he was. Maybe he's not sent by the Landry's. Maybe he, you know, really is a legit guy that was just walking along and saw a lady in distress and helped her and gave her his phone number. We conclude this episode with, oh my God, I was emotional and I really don't want to go too much into it, but I had no idea that bonfires are used to communicate to the ancestors. I thought that was really cool. People write notes and then they put them in a bonfire and they burn and they go up to heaven to their loved ones. I thought that was very nice and everyone had such nice words to say. Um, it touched uh, Ralph Angel so much he decided, fine, Darla can take uh, Blue on the field trip. And Charlie is disgusted with the Landrys and the way that they're doing things and the way they're doing her people, our people. And she promises her father she's going to take care of it. And I hope she does because the Landry's are low down and dirty, rotten scoundrels. And I know people like that. Like in my small town, that I could tell you stories about one of the wealthy families and how they did in my family. But, oh, well, we won't go into that. But it was nice. And, and Blue was so he was such a little man about it. He's like, okay, now everybody, we're now ready to to everybody put their notes in there. And Micah wish he had had more time with Papa. And I don't know. I just it just really got to me, and I'm starting to go right now. But either way, next week it's going to be an interesting week. Uh, Davis is going is still on his these are my confessions road tour. Uh, he tells Charlie about it. Uh, no, and Remy seem to uh, be getting a little close because Remy seems to know what Nova needs. Uh, Ralph Angel down to the dock shooting his shot with the boss's daughter. Mm -hmm. And shout out to her. I forgot her name just that fast. But the young lady that plays the daughter, thank you for coming onto my Twitter and supporting me. I hope you see these videos and welcome to Queen Sugar, lady. Welcome to Queen Sugar. But that's all I've got. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I am so disgusted by the Landry's because I know that there are legit white people out there that do that type of shit to poor black people in rural areas. I know it firsthand and it pisses me the fuck off. Either way, Ava, you're doing an outstanding job. The direction and the directors that you're selecting, amazing uh, Queen Sugar, it's what TV needs. And I have been Miss Sophia the Diva.